You can be amazing, you can turn a phrase into a weapon or a drug. You can be the outcast or be the backlash of somebody's lack of love. Oh, you can start speaking up. Nothing's gonna hurt you the way that words do when they settle neath your skin. Kept on the inside and no sunlight, sometimes the shadow wins. But I wonder what would happen if you say what you want to say and let the words fall out. Honestly, Thank you, Jen. Good morning and welcome to Unitarian Universalist Church West. Welcome to this community of comfort, connection, challenge, and caring. My name is Eddie Daniel, and as a member of the worship ministry team, I'm delighted to be leading the surface today, a special day in honor of Trans Day of Visibility, which is on March 31st. If you are new to UU Church West, I'd like to give you an extra special welcome. Checking out a new spiritual community can be a courageous act, even when we are doing church virtually. We would love to connect with you. If you send an email message to visitor at ucw.org, we will be in touch. 
I'd like to introduce the team of people who have contributed to today's service. The music was led by Jennifer Nicolosi, our lead music director. Kelly Bognar, our indispensable publications coordinator, is working behind the scenes to manage the technology that makes our service possible. Also helping to lead worship this morning are UUCW members Thayer German Fisher and Trevor Murdoch, who is here with us, as well as baritone solist, soloist Adlai Kim, who grew up at UUCW and is the son of our minister, the Reverend Suzelle Lynch. He is a vocal performance student at UWM. I am especially happy to welcome our special guest, Alex Capitan, back to our pulpit. As many of you know, Alex also grew up at UUCW and is my own cherished offspring. Alex has worked at the U Unitarian Universalist Association doing welcoming congregation, anti-racism, and social justice programming, and also served on the steering committee of TRUST, the UU Organization of Trans Religious Professionals. Alex now serves as a consultant on LGBTQ issues for UU congregations as part of the Transforming Hearts Collective. And here is Alex with our opening words. Thanks, Eddie slash daddy. <laughs> and hi, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to be back with you all um, and get to share in this virtual service together. I'm delighted to, to be with you this morning. Um, here in this time, when we are creating virtual sacred space together, when we are gathering from different physical, spiritual, emotional, and ancestral locations, it feels important to locate myself and invite you to locate yourself as well. I'm joining you today from my current home near the Great Falls. I grew up in Milwaukee, but I now live where the river the Abenaki peoples call Quinitigak, or Long River, meets the Mohawk Trail in the place called Peskiomskit by the Pecumtuck Nation and Greenfield, Massachusetts by white settlers, not far from that invisible corner where Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire meet. My ancestors have lived in this river valley and in eastern Massachusetts and in German colonized Wisconsin farmland and in the steel mills of Ohio and before that Germany, Hungary, and England. Their names were Kapitania, Bergdorf, Daniel, Pierce, Orange. I come from preachers and farmers and engineers and artists and teachers. I have other ancestors who have made it possible for me to be here today too. As a queer and genderqueer person, I wouldn't be here without generations of people before me who resisted oppressive norms of gender and sexuality and imagined a different reality into being. Feinberg, Murray, Kramer, Ginsburg, Roberts. And finally, I follow in the path of white anti-racism organizers, activists, and teachers. Braden, Liuzo, Reeb, Woolman, Kelly Foster. As we gather together virtually, center ourselves and pause to become fully present in this place together this morning, I want to invite you to join me in calling your ancestors into this space, those who forged a path that has made your life possible. As we breathe silently together for a moment, call them into your mind and your heart. Thank you for that. Feel the power of all those souls that have brought each of us to this virtual place. 
We are part of a larger fabric, held in a larger web and purpose. Let us worship together. Our opening hymn is number 1051, We Are, by Dr. Issei Barnwell, performed by Dr. Barnwell and the Virtual General Assembly 2020 Choir. Please join in if you feel so moved. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. Oh, for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. Oh, for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreamings, and we are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We Mothers of courage, fathers of time, daughters of dust, and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy, brothers of love, lovers of life, and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth, keepers of faith, makers of peace, and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers we are our grandfather's dreamings and we are the breath of our ancestors we are the spirit of god we are mothers of courage fathers of time daughters of dust and the sons of great visions we're sisters of mercy brothers of love lovers of life and the builders of nations we're seekers of truth and keepers of faith we are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages we are our grandmother's prayers we we are our grandfather's dreamings and we are the breath of our ancestors we are the spirit of god we are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings we are the breath of our ancestors we Spirit of God for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are one. When I think about living authentically and the joy that brings, I can't help but also think about what it's like to live uncomfortably, inauthentically. I think about the moments where clarity hit me and the light was so bright, the volume so loud, I couldn't ignore the message. The collective moments of seeing my true self in bits and pieces formed a picture that became my truth my life. Let the light of this chalice be a beacon of hope, truth, 
and joy for all of us. Let this flame represent the light that burns in each of us, the light of who we are meant to be. May we honor this light, nurture it, and let it shine. Hello again, everyone. So, I have a story for us this morning. How does that sound? It's called Introducing Teddy, and it's by Jessica Walton. So bear with me while I read to you old school style. <laughs> All right, Errol. <laughs> and Thomas the Teddy play together every day. They ride their bike in the backyard. They plant vegetables in the garden. They have sandwiches for lunch in the treehouse. And they have tea parties inside when it's raining. One day, Errol woke to find the sun shining through his bedroom window. Hooray, he shouted. Come on, Thomas, let's go to the park and play. Thomas the teddy didn't feel like playing. You seem sad today, Thomas, said Errol. Don't worry, the park will cheer you up. Thomas the teddy wasn't so sure. Oh no, even the swing isn't working. What's wrong, Thomas? Talk to me. If I tell you, said Thomas, you might not be my friend anymore. I will always be your friend, Thomas. Thomas the teddy took a deep breath. I need to be myself, Errol. In my heart, I've always known that I'm a girl teddy, not a boy teddy. I, I wish my name was Tilly, not Thomas. Is that why you've been so sad? Earl asked. I don't care if you're a girl teddy or a boy teddy. What matters is that you are my friend. You're the best friend a bear could have, said Tilly. Now that you're feeling better, said Errol, let's call our friend Ava. Hi, Ava. Teddy and I are at the park. Do you want to come and play? Sure, Errol. Let me just finish building my robot. Hi, Errol. Hi, Thomas, Ava called out as she sped toward them. Hi, Ava, said Errol. Teddy has a new name. Let me introduce you to Tilly. What a great name, said Ava. Let's go and play, Tilly. Wait, I'm just moving my bow tie, said Tilly, the teddy. I've always wanted a bow instead. Good for you, Tilly. Wear whatever makes you happy, said Ava. I think I'll get rid of my bow. I like my hair free. Errol, Ava, and Tilly played all morning until it was time to go home. See you at our next tea party, Errol said as Ava stepped onto her scooter. Yes, see you there. I'm bringing a friend, Ava yelled as she sped away. Errol and Tilly the Teddy play together every day. They ride their bike in the backyard. They plant vegetables in the garden. They have sandwiches for lunch in the treehouse. 
And they have tea parties inside when it's raining. That looks like a really good tea party. The end. <laughs> I hope you liked the story. And now let's have some more music about the joy of being your true self, this time from the Boston Gay Men's Chorus. for Transgender Day of Visibility by Mr. Barb Grieve. Blessed are the trailblazers who brought us this far and are still trailblazing, still celebrating. 
Blessed are the drag queens and kings who remind us not remind us to not take life seriously. Blessed are the gender benders, non-binary, gender fluid, and third gender folk. Those who challenge us to reframe our gender paradigm. Blessed are the young ones who present fearlessly from the start. Blessed are the parents who make space for freedom and love their children fiercely. Blessed are the siblings and relatives who educate, support, and love us as we are. Blessed are the genderqueer youth who are struggling to and present. Blessed are the 90-year-olds just coming out and who and those who have been out decades. Blessed are those who whose lives were cut too short. May their stories live on through us. Blessed are the survivors. May they keep on living. Blessed are the allies learning to be accomplices. Blessed are those gathered here today witnessing, learning, celebrating. May we all commit to continue showing up, fighting for justice, celebrating all genders in life. Amen. I can't recall a night so clear The heavens seem an inch away Not cold and empty like before A night as sweet as this tonight I can't recall I can't recall My authentic life is being a father, husband, brother, and son. I work hard at my job, struggle to be patient and present with my kids, strive to be a good husband, stay in touch with my parents and brother on the West Coast, chat with my neighbors about things going on in our old homes, attend UU church service, and perform concerts with my choir. These identities fill me with joy. They don't necessarily need more context. There are other times, however, when living authentically 
also means including the context of the mostly invisible parts of my life. My time as a Girl Scout. When I attended an all girls school. How I embrace my queer and trans identity. All of these experiences and identities create who I am today and bring me to a place of joy and freedom. And hello again, everyone. And thanks again for the gift of getting to visit you virtually this morning and be together, share in this space. It's really lovely to be back at my home church, even if only virtually. And particularly, it's lovely to be leading worship with my dad this morning. Can you believe that my parents have been attending UUCW for 30 years? Sorry, didn't mean to age y'all there. <laughs> it's just amazing, right? This is the kid my parents brought to church with them 30 years ago. A couple of you watching might remember me at this age. The Little Mermaid had recently come out and I was instantly obsessed. This ingenious Halloween costume made for me by my mom quickly became a year-round outfit. I used to sit in our front yard imagining the amazement of all the people driving by at the sight of a mermaid so far from the water. We took a road trip to visit my great-grandmother and her Ocean View cottage in Massachusetts, and I distinctly remember the lengths my mom had to go to to convince me not to wear my tail all the way there and quickly throw myself onto one of the glorious rocks in front of my great grams cottage before she came out to greet us. You'll give her a heart attack, she pleaded. She'll be too surprised to see a mermaid in her yard. Well, what really made me the Little Mermaid in my mind and heart, though, was not the outfit, but the music. I memorized all of the songs and sang them everywhere, including at church. UUCW legend has it that it was my earnest belting of part of your world in the lower level of at all hours that inspired then music director Bob Simiel to start a kids choir. 1990 marked the year that both The Little Mermaid and the 1960 Broadway production of Peter Pan starring Mary Martin were released on VHS. These two musicals are the backdrop of my early childhood. I was mesmerized by both title characters. My very favorite childhood memory was my Peter Pan themed seventh birthday party to which all of the guests had to come in costume, of course. I was Tinkerbell wearing yet another magical outfit creatively crafted for me by my mom, and I downright forced my best friend to come as Peter Pan. In true to Broadway fashion, my dad played a Captain Hook to rival Dustin Hoffman's and chased us all around the house and yard for hours. It was heaven. I was deeply blessed to have parents and a church that gave me complete and total freedom of expression. No one ever told me I wasn't a mermaid or a fairy. No one ever tried to hush my song. The first seven years of my life were full of magic, brought to me through art and books. I was a rough and tumble princess who loved bugs and dinosaurs and dresses that could be twirled in. All of my best friends were boys and I was the ringleader. No, really, I literally played the ringleader in a kindergarten circus production. <laughs> It wasn't until third grade that things changed, that the fairy tale world that I invited everyone around me to join me in every day was challenged. That was the year that the other kids on the playground started letting me know in no uncertain terms that I wasn't following the rules for being a girl. You see, I was able to have a carefree childhood because everyone assumed I was a girl. After all, I wore pigtails and princess dresses, so the adults in my life never picked up on my gender nonconformity. But it was only a matter of time before my peers did. I started third grade in love with life and with school, but by the end of the year, I had lost my spark. I had always thought of everyone as my friend, but now lines were being drawn and I didn't understand any of the rules. No longer could I wear the frilliest dress I wanted every day and run with the boys without being sneered at and mercilessly teased for both my excessive femininity and my apparent masculinity. So I made a conscious choice to try to follow the gender rules I didn't understand. I turned my back on my best friend 
joined a crew of girls, tamped down the fairy tale parts of myself, and tried to fit in. But it just made me more miserable. My new friends cooed over new kids on the block and had posters of Justin Taylor Thomas on their bedroom walls. They played games that revolved around things like marriage and motherhood. Far from being able to fit in, I only felt more and more like a square peg in a round hole. My parents came through for me again. They didn't know why I was miserable, but they had a sense that if I stuck with the same group of kids and the same TOSA school system, things wouldn't get any better. So they gave me the chance to go to a middle school for the arts across town. And once again, my life had creativity and vibrancy and more musicals. <laughs> I still felt adrift, but I slowly carved out a space for myself among other misfits. It would be 10 years before I would be able to reclaim the authenticity and rediscover the unbridled joy and fabulosity of my six-year-old self. But honestly, 10 years of seeking and becoming feels pretty darn lucky to me as a genderqueer, non-binary person who grew up with no sense that there were other people out there who weren't girls or boys, no representations of people like me beyond Mary Martin as Peter Pan. I found a way anyway. I found people who saw me as I truly am, loved me for my contradictions and fairy tale nature, and reflected back who I was when I was racked with self-doubt. I found more music and kept on singing, slowly journeying back to myself. The popular mainstream story of what it means to be trans is one of absolutes and pain. The visceral hidden knowledge of who you are from a young age the unspeakable suffering of being forced to live as someone you're not, the agonizing decision to tell the world who you really are, the transition that marks a closed door on the past and the emergence of the real, true you. This story isn't wrong. It is many people's story, but it's not the only story. It's certainly not my story. My story is a story of a lifelong journey and dedication to living authentically. It's a story of constantly exploring, questioning, and becoming myself. It's a story of being a mermaid and a fairy and a boy who never grows up. It's a story of knowing who I'm not long before I could articulate who I am. But ultimately, it's a story of joy. Every single day now, I get to make an active choice to be my fullest, most glorious self, the self I was made to be. And I am here to testify that when you have been told by the world that who you are is impossible, who you are doesn't exist, and you laugh and say, oh, honey, do I look like I don't exist to you? That feeling, the feeling of knowing yourself and being your, yourself despite it all is the best feeling in the world. It makes me want to fly. My best friend, Michael, who is a queer and trans black man and an ordained minister, talks about how he was called to be the person he is. Who I am right now is who I am called to be, he says. I don't know how or when that happened and I can't explain it, but I know that it is true. And so I move toward that call every day in all the ways that I can. As I reflect on Trans Day of Visibility, which is celebrated annually on March 31st, this is what visibility means to me. It means taking the risk to live authentically. It means being visibly, authentically you, the most you version of yourself, the you that you are called to be. There's a spark in each of us, not just trans people, but all people, that refuses to go out no matter what the world throws at us. There's something that pulls us forward and compels us to be who we are meant to be. When we live from that place of authenticity, that's when we come truly alive. And when we are truly alive, we bring that aliveness forward in everything we do. All of our relationships, our work, our activism, our art, our play. In her absolutely incredible book, Redefining Realness, Janet Mock, a Black and Native Hawaiian trans woman, writes, self-definition 
and self-determination is about the many varied decisions that we make to compose and journey toward ourselves, about the audacity and strength to proclaim, create, and evolve into who we know ourselves to be. That's what transition actually means. Transition doesn't mean surgery or hormones or pronouns. It means journeying toward ourselves. Transition doesn't mean changing genders. In the words of Janet Mock again, it means revealing who we've always been. For me, journeying toward myself and revealing who I've always been was a process of reclamation. It was a process of rejecting the rules and the boxes and the limits that were placed on me by our wider culture. Everything I was forcibly taught about who I was supposed to be and how I was supposed to act based on who the world perceived me to be. What have you been taught about who you are supposed to be and how you are supposed to act based on who the world has perceived you to be and based on what the world thinks of as the most normal and valuable ways to be? I think of my grandmother, Lee Capitan who was at the top of her high school class, but was passed over for a college scholarship because she was a woman. I think of my dear friend, Lynn Young, who was socialized to be and act white and ignore the Lakota heritage and identity buried inside. I think of all my friends who have been told to hide their queerness or their disabilities or their class background in order to fit in. Living by other people's definitions and perceptions shrinks us to shells of ourselves rather than complex people embodying multiple identities, says Janet Mock. But every day we get to make a choice about who we are going to be. Every day is a chance to proclaim, create, and evolve into who we know ourselves to be. Every day is an opportunity to access the joy in living authentically. Now, don't get it twisted. <laughs> living your most visible, authentic life doesn't mean you have to tell everyone you meet every single facet of your life story and history. And I don't want you to think that just because I chose to share a little about my six-year-old self today, you're entitled to know the childhood story of every trans person who crosses your path. My vulnerability in sharing that adorable little self that I was with you comes from a place of wanting to share more about who I have always been. Sharing with you some of the fullness of my sparkly, gender overflowing non-binary self helps you see the real me, the authentic me, rather than assuming that I'm a man simply because my parents use he and him when they talk about me. I don't actually need to share anything with you in order to be my full self, because I know who I am, and I live fully from that place of truth. That's what visibility means to me. My partner, Teddy, would just as soon move through the world without anyone knowing that he was assigned female at birth. He is living his most visible, authentic life as a man. Being a woodworking, blue collar, kind and gentle man is how he comes most alive and shares his aliveness with the world. Every single day, he gets to decide what kind of man he's going to be. Visibility is about the joy that comes from being himself, not the shock factor of telling people that he's trans. Does that make sense? You don't owe anyone any explanation about what has led you to your truth. You only owe yourself the chance to live from that place of truth. There's a relatively new term that has taken off among young trans and non-binary folks. It's gender euphoria. Have you heard it? Isn't it wonderful? It describes the flip side of gender dysphoria, that sense of wrongness in your own skin. Gender euphoria is the sense of profound rightness and joy that comes with being your true self. Folks will say things like, OMG, my mom finally called me by my chosen name and it made me feel so euphoric, or these heels make my gender so happy today. I want everyone to experience that kind of joy. 
every single person, the sort of joy that comes from living authentically. What is it about this culture that we live in that trans people are only affirmed as real and visible through the avenue of our deepest pain and suffering? For decades, the gatekeepers of this society have said, I'll only believe that you are who you say you are if you can prove to me that you'd rather die than live as the person I perceive you to be. What if we honored each other's joy more than each other's pain? What if we said, I see and validate you because I recognize your gender euphoria rather than needing a person's gender dysphoria to get so bad that the only last ditch option for survival is acknowledgement of who they truly are. Trans Day of Visibility was born a few years back, not as some trans specific national coming out day, but rather as a corollary to Trans Day of Remembrance. Trans folk were answering the call from trans women of color to give us our flowers while we're still alive. Instead of the only international day of recognition of trans people being the day on which we mourn those lost to anti-trans violence, they created a day for trans joy, euphoria, authenticity, resilience, thriving. Trans people are a model for all of us in the joy in living authentically. Each and every person has a homing beacon and that homing beacon is joy. The voice that calls us to be our most authentic, joy-filled, euphoric selves that brings us most alive. On this day, as we honor trans joy, I want to invite you to consider who you are called to be. To what wholeness are you called? What parts of yourself have you hidden away, buried or boxed because of the expectations or perceptions of others? What would it look like if you let them shine? Every day we have a choice. My commitment to living authentically is to choose joy. I hope you will too. Amen. Ashe. Aho, and blessed be. Thank you, thank you, Alex. I love your story, I love your message, and I love you. And now, let's hear from Jim Maletta about how to support UUCW and this month's Split the Plate partner. Split the Plate is one of UUCW's programs of outreach and generosity. Each month we give one half the undesignated offering monies to a worthy cause as a way to help live our Unitarian Universalist values and serve our beloved community. River West Food Pantry is our partner for March. River West Pantry has been working out of St. Casimir's Church in Milwaukee since 1979. They serve the unemployed, underemployed, socially isolated, minorities, and children. With the COVID pandemic, they have a 30% increase in demand for food assistance. Your financial support will help them purchase food for distribution. They served over 13,000 community members in 2020, as well as their households. River West Pantry is more than a food pantry. They run an urban farm that grows over 12,000 pounds of fresh produce a year. They offer collaboratively prepared meals paired with training programs. Trained volunteers provide crisis mentoring to help put people in touch with resources to address homelessness, eviction, and unemployment along with other issues. We know that some folks have been hit harder than others by this pandemic. So we ask you to do the best you can do here. Your donation is urgently needed. To support River West Food Pantry, 
go to UUCW.org and click on the Donate tab and select Split the Plate. Or you can text or mail your donation today using the information found here. Thank you. I hope you all be you will all be motivated to give generously this morning to such an important cause. And thank you, Jim, for telling us about it. And thank you, Daddy, for your kind words and Mama for your love on Facebook. Uh, I really appreciate everyone who's commenting if you're joining us live. Um, and again, if this is your first time joining UUCW, I hope that you'll come back. It's a really magical, wonderful, caring community, and you have a home here. Our closing words today come from Spilling the Light, Meditations on Hope and Resilience by Reverend Teresa Soto, a fabulous non-binary UU minister. To be free, you must embrace the breadth of your own existence without apology, even if they try to take it from you. You must know not that you can do whatever you want. You are not a kudzu vine eating entire hillsides, hillsides for the purpose of feeding your own lush life. You must know instead that inside you are entire universes, milky blue, magenta, and gold, expanding. But to actually be free, you must know and you must fight for the entire universes inside of everyone else. Being free is not a license, but a promise. Mm. Amen. Go in peace, go in love, go in joy. I have to hide in life's not worth a day.